This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at specifically identifying whether or not there is or isn't a lease within a contract between two parties. In the previous video, we just made a really simple assumption, didn't we? That company A was the lessor, company B was the lessee. Was it company A being the lessor owned the asset? Company B as the lessee uh, used that asset for rental payments over a lease period. So we just assume that there was a lease. However, you've got to be very careful and look at the particulars of the contract between company A and company B to identify if there is a lease. If, if there is a lease identified, then we will follow the rules of IFRS 16. If not, we would have to go through there and follow the alternative treatment under the relevant accounting standard. So how do we go through there and identify a lease? And what I really like about this is that we really begin to convey the feeling and the flavour of what these IFRSs are all about and, and the new language that, that they contain. OK, so what you've got there, if there is a lease, first of all, there needs to be a contract. So a contract between the two parties, is it A and B? OK, but it's what that contract gives right to. OK, so what you've got there is you see the word control the use of an asset. OK, so going back there to control, if you control the asset, it meets the definition of an asset and therefore there is a lease. As company B, you are the lessee and therefore you recognise that lease within your financial statements. OK, ignoring the the low value and short lease exemptions that we have. OK, uh, and that comes straight from, is it paragraph nine of IFRS 16? So there needs to be a contract and we need to control the use of an identified asset. OK, again, think. You need to pay particular attention to that word identified. OK, think of it as a specific asset. OK, not just any asset out of a group of assets. It's a specific identified asset. OK, and then what the standard then goes on to do is add just a little bit more detail because it starts talking there about what we then mean by control. And again, this is what I really like about the standard in the way that it brings in the word control, doesn't it, by talking about whether or not we have the right to direct the assets or direct the identified assets use. So can we specifically dictate how that asset is used, when that asset is used, what that asset is used for? OK, going back, you know, think about groups you know we, we spoke about control uh, and we spoke about control as being the power to direct the activity so if you can direct something you have control okay so here you direct the identified asset use you have control if you have control you're going to have a lease okay if there is a lease you account for it under ifrs 16. Uh, just note again come back to the definition of an asset a resource that is controlled by an entity as a result of a past event, but more importantly, gives you an inflow of economic benefit. And here it says there, do we get substantially all of the economic benefits? OK, which you should do if you're able to direct it. OK, if you're directing it, you should get the majority, the substantial use of the asset and therefore the substantial economic benefit okay however just note that there's just a little caveat if you like that, that's thrown in uh just note if the supplier now that this is the way that the the standard tends to talk about things initially in that the supplier is company a so if there's a lease that is there for the lessor it can't say however if the lessor because we're, we're trying to identify if there is a lease. So we can't talk about lessee, lessor until we've identified the lease. So think of the lessor, in inverted commas, as the supplier. OK, so if the supplier, the person who owns the asset, has a substantive right to substitute the asset, uh, then 
that means that you do not have the right of use and therefore there is no lease okay so what you've got there if we just summarize it then what you've got is let's just say that if there is substitution rights by the supplier okay so they can take the asset that you're using and swap it for another one then if that's the case there is no lease okay however if there are no substitution rights by the supplier then that means that there is a lease if that's the case then we're going to use is it IFRS 16 and therefore that supplier will then become the lessor and the person who's making the payment is the lessee okay now that's the rules okay so you need to think about control uh, control means therefore an identified asset and being able to direct the use of it that should then give you substantially all the economic benefits and then just you need to think about there these substitution rights if the supplier can substitute the asset for a similar asset from the rest of the fleet uh, then there is no lease uh, however, if the supplier cannot substitute the asset and you have, if you like, sole use uh, of that asset, then it is a lease. OK. And this is where we need to think about examinability. Uh, what you need to do is watch this example. We'll go through and play around with this example. But you also need to locate the illustrative examples from IFRS 16. There's about six illustrative examples that cover similar areas whereby there is a lease and then there isn't a lease okay and they look very similar but there are subtle differences and if you can cover those six areas i think you're going to cover yourself for all aspects of examinability because as ifrs 16 gets introduced to the syllabus from september 2017 there is going to be a question somewhere on leases okay there's going to be an industry specific question on leases i can guarantee i don't know whether it's going to be in september i don't know whether it's going to be in december i don't know whether it's going to be in march or june but there will be won't there? okay it's a new standard okay the examiner is mightily happy that there is another new standard alongside ifrs 15 hurrah okay uh, and therefore there's lots to examine Okay, if you go back and look at IFRS 15, it's been examined a lot and yet it's only been in the syllabus, I think, for a year as I speak. OK, uh, so make sure you go through and find those illustrative examples and make sure as well that you go through and work them and understand the answer. Don't just read the answer. Make sure that you can put the answer in your own specific words. OK, so let's have a look at it, shall we? OK. Uh, the example is all about their identifying a lease. So there will either be a lease or there won't be a lease. Remember, there will be a lease if we control the asset. OK, so if we have the direct use of it and if we have the is it substantially all the economic benefits. And then we need to think about the substitution rights. If the supplier can substitute the asset that we are using for another similar asset, then there is no lease. However, if they cannot substitute the asset, then there is a lease and therefore the supplier becomes the lessor and we are the lessee and IFRS 16 applies. Got it? Yes, brilliant. Let's have a look. OK, what I'd like you to do, OK, is read this example. OK, read through the example, go through the notes, have a look and then play the video. OK, so you're going to have to stop it in a second. And then once you've stopped it, work the example. Once you're happy with it, don't look at the answer at the back. Look at that afterwards. OK, don't cheat. Cheats get nowhere. Okay, cheats never prosper. So work the example, 
Then when it's worked, you can come back and listen to me talk about it and then look at the answer as well. Are you ready? Stop the video. Okay, Chris, so hopefully that'll stop the video. We'll just carry on. Okay. Did you stop the video? I seriously hope you did. If you didn't, you're wasting your time. Okay. Don't just sit there and listen to me. I can't think of anything worse to do than listen to me continually, day in, day out. Try and be active within your learning. Okay. Take responsibility for it. Therefore, work the example. So if you haven't worked the example, stop the video and then come back. Okay. In the meantime, for those of you who have looked at it, worked it through, thought about whether or not we have control, whether that then means that we're able to direct the use of the asset, whether that means that we get substantially all of the economic benefits, whether that then means that we need to then look at substitution rights, depends upon whether it's lease or lease. How many times have I said that? Enough, let's get on with the example. I apologise, I'm waffling on purely because of the excitement of a new standard, okay? So what have we got? Uh, it says there, explain each of the two following scenarios, or sorry, explain for each of the two following scenarios if the contract is a lease or if it contains a lease, okay? Uh, so is there a lease? Yes or no, okay? So number one uh, question, was there a lease? Yes or no? Hands up, yes. Okay. Good few of you. Hands up, no. Hands up, unsure. Okay. The answer here is yes. Okay. That there is a lease in scenario number one. Okay. Why? Okay. Because you look at both of them, what are Chris, they're the same, they're virtually identical in terms of the scenario. There's a subtle difference in them. Okay, let's have a look at them. It says here, Peach needs to transport its goods to customers in Europe using rail freight. Okay, so uh, rail trains, doesn't it? Okay, the company enters into a contract. So there's a contract. So there could potentially be a lease within that contract uh, with a rail freight carrier. So the rail freight carrier supplies the wagons uh, for the train to pull. Okay, they are the supplier. We are the customer. And here it's for the use of 10 rail cars uh, of a particular type. Is it there for five years? Okay. Why does that mean that there's a lease? Okay. Well, remember there is a lease if we can control uh, the use of that asset. So for five years, we're going to use those 10 rail cars to deliver whatever freight it is that we decide. For freight, think goods, okay? So whatever goods we want, we can put in those 10 rail cars, those 10 rail cars only, no other rail cars, okay? So therefore, we're gonna get the benefit from using those rail cars. Uh, we can direct the use of those rail cars in terms of what goes in them, in terms of how they are used, okay? And there is no mention of any substitution rights either. OK, uh, the rail freight carrier cannot substitute another rail car in for one of those 10 rail cars. They can't say, well, we need this rail car. Uh, we're going to take it off you and give you something different to you. So therefore, there are no substitution rights. So therefore, there is a lease. OK, happy with that. There. OK, excellent. Uh, number two. You could be guess, can't you, uh, by a process of elimination. But let's play the game. Uh, is there a lease? Yes or no? Hands up of those of you who think there is a lease. Hardly anybody. Uh, hands up those of you who think there is no lease. Virtually everyone. OK, correct. And hands up those of you who are not sure. Shocking. How can you be not sure? In the exam, what are you going to do? Sit there and go, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know what to do. You've got to have some conviction. Go with your first conviction yes or no okay if it's wrong doesn't matter okay so what have we got in number two the, the answer to number two is that there is no lease okay and if you read them they are very similar uh, peaks needs to transport its goods to customers in europe using rail freight it's exactly the same sentence as the first scenario the company enters into a contract with a rail freight carrier exactly the same as what we saw in the first aspect 
However, what it then says uh, is that the contract just requires the carrier to transport a specific or a specified quantity of goods using a specified type of rail car. Okay, so it could be any car, okay, uh, that the supplier decides to go through and use to transport our goods. Okay, uh, in accordance with the stated timetable, is it there for five years? Okay, so we can only use it based upon what's timetabled for the trains. Okay, previously there was no mention of the timetable, was there? Okay, so we could use it however, whenever we wanted. Here, we can't direct the use of, of the rail cars. Okay, the rail cars run on a timetable. Okay, those, ti those rail cars uh, are a specific rail car, but they, it can be any of the specific rail car from the fleet. So we don't control a specified asset, do we? Okay, we don't have the, the ability to direct its use. We don't get the benefits from all of the rail cars, do we only get a benefit from the ones that we actually use? Okay, the supplier has a, a huge fleet of rail cars, okay, uh, and therefore there are substitution rights because they can swap one rail car for another uh, whenever they see fit. You know, they put one rail car in the timetable one week and then another one the week after, okay. So in this instance, there are no sub uh, sorry, there are substitution rights, we don't have control we don't have the ability to direct the use we do not have substantially all of the economic benefits so therefore there is no lease okay and therefore IFRS 16 would not apply okay again I do think that that could arise maybe four or five marks to go through that and explain if it contains at least the detailed answer is in the the class notes at the back okay you need to Maybe expand upon it just a little bit more based upon the specifics in the questions that you're given. But as I said, the key, I think, is to work the illustrative examples that you can find within IFRS 16. So just do a search, an Internet search, illustrative examples, IFRS 16, and you will find the examples that we are talking about. You'll find that they are very similar in nature, but like here, each one has a subtle difference that means in one there's a lease and in the other there is not a lease. Okay, excellent. I'll see you all in the next lecture.